Carl Wilhelm Otto Lilienthal is considered to be a pioneer of aviation who became known as the Glider King. He carefully examined the flight of birds and was the first person to make well-documented, repeated and successful gliding flights. At the beginning of the 20th century, engine-powered airplanes could fly long-distance flights, such as the first transatlantic crossing. But even today, we really don't know for sure why airplanes can fly. However, wind tunnels with powerful fan systems and nebulizers have been used to shed some light on it. In a wind tunnel, we can see, for example, that air passes faster in the top than it does on the bottom of an airfoil. But why? First, let's take a look at an important principle that Bernoulli discovered in the 18th century. Daniel Bernoulli found out that fast-moving liquids or air exert less pressure than slow-moving liquids or air. As a result, the pressure on top of the wing is much lower than the pressure below it because the air moves faster on top of the wing. This produces a force that pushes the wing and consequently the airplane upwards. But why is the airflow on top faster than the air below the wing? By carefully examining the airflow around an airfoil, we see that vortices are being generated. These vortices are called wake turbulences and become visible thanks to the fog. A theory says that a vortex in the form of a circulating airflow will build up around the wing. This circulation increases the velocity of the airflow on top of the wing and decreases its speed below it. But what is the source of this circulation? A theory says that a vortex is created when the airplane goes fast enough. As a result, a counter-rotating vortex called circulation or circulating airflow will build up around the airfoil of the airplane. The starting vortex remains on the ground. Only the circulation will flow around the airfoil during the entire flight. So the first theory says that during the starting phase, a vortex builds up that causes the creation of a circulation that will increase as well as decrease airflows. This will, according to Bernoulli, create high and low pressure zones. As a result, lift is generated. However, in another theory, Newton's laws are used to explain why airplanes can't fly. This theory says that the wing diverts air down. Here, a key concept is the Quanda effect. The Quanda effect applies as soon as a moving jet of fluid meets a solid surface and follows this surface around the curve. This is also true for an airfoil. The form of the airfoil, however, is not as important as the angle of attack, that is, the angle between the airfoil and the oncoming flow. The higher the angle of attack, the higher the lift. However, the aircraft will be in a stall if the angle of attack is too high, then no lift is generated. Even if there are other theories, this animation has given you an overview of the most widely accepted ones.